Hello and welcome to another one of my training videos where today I will be taking you through how I use and how to get started with 1Password. Now 1Password is an app I've mentioned many times in videos on my blog and in my podcast before. It really is an app that I think it, it helps me actually to be more productive because I've got everything more organized and I, I can log into accounts much quicker and of course much safer online. So I'm going to be talking about 1Password today. If you have any questions please feel free to leave me a comment below and share your ideas if there's specific videos you want me to make about different tools or my productivity system, let me know your feedback in the comments below. So first of all, let's talk about why do you even need a password manager? Now, most people use the same password or the vari a variation of the same password for most of the websites and services that they sign up for. And this is an issue for a few reasons. If firstly, or the main issue is that if a website gets hacked or is compromised, then that email and password combination that you have, if you're using that on another service, well potentially then whoever did the hack, they could now take that and try that on different websites to try and get into your email or your banking information. So if you are reusing the same or similar password for lots of services, even if one service is hacked, a lot more other services that you're signed up for could be at risk as well. Now you might be sitting here thinking, how likely is that to happen? Well. In 2012, both Dropbox and LinkedIn were hacked. So these are pretty big companies that you would think would be quite secure. Even since then, there've been uh, other big hacks. Facebook has been hacked. They are always giving out information. So it happens more than you think. And if you go to have I been pwned, that's P-W-N-E-D, not owned, but have I been pwned.com, that website will actually tell you, you can put your email into their search engine and it will actually tell you if your password has been leaked online onto the dark web. Because what actually happens is after a service gets hacked, the these lists of emails and passwords, they make it onto the dark web and these bad guys, they buy these lists and they try these combinations of passwords on lots of websites like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and they, they try and see which accounts they can get into. And if they can get into your email, then they could actually potentially reset things like your banking password or other services that you've signed up for. And it can result in losing your information, maybe blackmail, blackmail, not good things. Generally bad things are gonna happen. So the solution is we really wanna have strong, unique passwords for every service that we sign up for. Generally something that's like a long scramble of random letters and numbers and, and characters, or just a random assortment of words that's hard to guess. Now obviously having these random passwords for the hundreds of services that you need to sign up for, remembering all these is pretty hard or next to impossible. So that's where a password manager like 1Password comes in. So what is 1Password? Well, it's a place to store all your important log information, but it's actually much more than that. You can see on the sidebar here, I can store all sorts of information like documents, important notes, passport information, credit cards, all sorts of types of information I can put in here. So instead of putting it on a piece of paper in a notebook or do what I did years ago, which is I had a, a Word document, I thought I was being really smart, um, but that's actually turns out not a very secure thing to do. So it keeps all of this information secure and it's encrypted on your device. So it's encrypted on my computer. I have it on my phone as well. It's encrypted on my phone. And the good thing is with 1Password, not even 1Password, the company can get access to my information. So they can't sell it. They can't use it for advertising. If I actually lost access to my account, which is quite hard to do if you um, do what I'm going to tell you in a bit, if I did lose access to my account, they can't even reset my password. They're that secure. They do not want to be saying, uh, you know, we'll reset your password for you because that might mean somebody might be faking to be you and they can get access to your account. So they can't even reset your password. That's how serious they are about security. And so here, it's not just uh, storing information, but now if I get to a login form like this, I can, I've, it's, Safari's actually suggesting a password here, but I can type a keyboard shortcut like command slash or actually have the one password mini up here in my browser. I can then um, quickly autofill this password and sign in really simple. So I don't have to type anything. I don't have to remember my password. Uh, so it makes logging in really quick and easy. It also supports two-factor authentication. So certain accounts, like let's look at that Pocketsmith one again, you see this little one-time password here, this little six-digit number. This is like a second piece of information that Pocketsmith needs when I'm logging in. Uh, usually you might have to put this in every couple of weeks or if it's the first time you're logging in from a certain machine. So as well as putting in my normal password, I have to enter this six-digit code that 
regenerates every 30 seconds. So if you've ever signed up to a service where they've tried to send you a text message to log in, it works in a similar way, but instead of waiting for that text, I've got it right here in one password. Now, if you are signing into a service for the first time, let's put in a new email here let's, that I've never logged in with. Um, dot com and let's just <clears throat> I'm going to type a random password this is not even a real account one two three four five six seven this is not real account so don't try it let's uh, click sign in and then one password pops up and it's saying do you want to save this password because it's my first time logging in with these credentials so I could um, update an existing password that I have or I can create a new login and automatically save that. Now when you get started with 1Password you're going to want to download a few different applications. Obviously the 1Password application for Windows or Mac, whatever you're using. You're probably going to want it on your phone as well. You will also need your phone if you are setting up those two-factor authentication passwords because to set them up you have to take a picture of a QR code that's shown on the screen so you are going to want to have the application on your phone and you will need the 1Password mini up here. This is so that you can access passwords uh, and fill them in on the browser and it's also just handy to be able to find information so wherever I am on my computer I can um, bring up one password mini I can type anything in here to find like a note or my passport or my credit card information whatever information I want to get quick access to so some of the ways I'm using one password like I said it's not just for login information but I use it for things like my credit cards so if I'm filling out a checkout form uh, to buy something online I can quickly put in credit card information I've got passport information stored in there and actually we were recently traveling and we were getting on a train we didn't actually realize we needed to have ID with us and I had mine but Haley didn't have hers uh, but fortunately I had a copy, a photocopy of her passport in one password so I was able to quickly get it up on my phone and show show the, the copy that we had so that was really handy. We also have a family account so we can have um, shared passwords between us for things like Netflix and you can set up a family account or a team account for your, your company or wherever you work so if you need to share logins with different people on your team that's really handy. I also use it for software licenses, so this is less common now with things like the App Store, but sometimes I'll download an application and it comes with a license key, so I can store those licenses in one password. Uh, as I said, two-factor authentication, pretty much whenever I have the option to, I will turn on two-factor authentication to just enable that extra level of security. And when you turn on two-factor, often you will get what's called a backup or a recovery code. So this is a one-time use code that you can use to log into your account if you can't get access to that six-digit number for some reason. So it's one-time code, and I store all those in one password as well. And as I said, finally, it does support things like secure notes. So I actually have, have a note called In Case I Die, and Haley has access to this. Because in our household, I deal with things like the finances, insurance, uh, utilities, things like that. So if I died, you know, worst case scenario, let's touch wood, but uh, if something bad happened, um, I don't want Haley to have to stress about those things. So I have a note explaining, here's how you'll get access to my life insurance payout. This is what you need to do with my website. Um, if you want to get access to our Bitcoin and sell that here's how you would do that and so there's just instructions on things to do in case I die um, because at a bad time when Haley's stressed out and uh, going through a tough time I would like to have some instructions ready to make certain things a bit easier for her so 1Password really can be used for quite a lot of things it's one of those tools that you probably want to spend some time learning at a weekend when you have an hour sit down download the apps and uh, start changing some of your important passwords like your email and your bank account passwords to begin with. And finally, when you sign up to 1Password, you will be given uh, what's called a 1Password emergency kit. So this emergency kit contains a secret key, which is a long 24-digit code. That code you need to use every time you log in on a brand new device. So when you're setting it up on your phone or your computer, you'll need that secret key. What this means is, even if I shared my 1Password with you now, you still wouldn't be able to get access to my account because you would need my secret key. So when you sign up and you get the secret key, make sure you print it out, keep a few copies around the house, give a copy to a trusted friend or family member uh, because you definitely don't want to lose access to your 1Password account. If you're anything like me, you have a lot of very important information in there. So I've got multiple copies of this um, hidden around the place. So if you're not using 1Password or any kind of password manager, please, please, please take my advice. Spend some time this weekend sitting down, setting it up. Uh, it really is not as much of a chore as you think it is. And uh, it really will kind of take off some of that pressure of trying to be safer and more secure online. And I think it's, a, it's an exercise really worth going through. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video.